I hate this book so much. Hey there, guys. I'm trying for a reason to get a little bit ahead on my filming, and so I'm taking advantage of the time I have, even if I'm uh, multitasking, to get a couple videos recorded. Um, today I'm doing another children's book review, and oh my gosh, I just am not a fan of this book. It's Sleepy ABC by Margaret Weiss Brown, by the author of Good Night Moon. So you would think it's fantastic, right? Good Night Moon, the classic. The seminal classic children's nighttime book. <sighs> First of all, this was a gift. Um, and so this is absolutely no knock against the people who gave it to us. It was such a sweet, you know, gift uh, from our, uh, our baby shower. I received it from an aunt and uncle. And uh, very grateful for the gift, right? Obviously, you would think, hey, look, it's another bedtime book by the author of Goodnight Moon. What could go wrong? It's got to be really good. Hey, hey, no biting. But it's, uh, oh, oh gosh. It, I made a list. I printed it out. I typed it up and I printed it out and I marked it up so I could try to articulate exactly what it is about this book that drives me nuts. But we're going to start. I'm, I'm going to start with a straight reading. We're going to read it straight through and I'm going to try not to let my annoyance with any of this book come across in my voice, all right? I'm just going to read it as if I loved it. Sleepy ABC by Margaret Weiss Brown. A is for ah when a small kitten sighs. B is for ba when the lambs close their eyes. C is for caw when the last crow crows. D is for dreams and the dark wind that blows. E is for eyes that all must close, the childs, the rabbits, and the rose. E is, sorry, F is for feet that won't fall asleep. G is for grazing of sleepy sheep. H is for heaven high overhead. I is for me who is going to bed. J is for jump and don't bump your head. K is for kissing your mother good night. L is for listening when they turn out the light. M is for mother who tucks you in tight. N is for the dark and starry night. O is for oh at the story they read. P is for pillow under your head. Q is for quiet that is all around. R is for rabbits that never make a sound. S is for stars that blaze in the sky. T is for time that is passing by. U is for nothing under the bed. V is for visions that dance in your head. W is for work you will do the next day. X is for all of the things you can play. Y is for your morning before you sleep. Z is for zipper. Now zip into bed, not another peep. Go to sleep. Wow, okay. Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe you thought that was lovely and like, uh, there's a couple things about it that just bug me. It doesn't really scan. Like, I don't know that much about scanning. I don't know anything about scanning poetry, honestly, but like I evaluated it. The first four lines are great. You know, it's A, A, B, B. Then it keeps going with the same rhyme for E is for eyes that almost close. You've got crows, blows, clothes, and then rows. <sighs> like the child's the rabbits and the rows. Why rabbits? Whatever. But like, Shouldn't it be the roses? And that doesn't rhyme. So why not the child, the rabbit? Like, it doesn't match. Then you have a list. It's called parallel writing, right? It's supposed to be like, they match. They don't match. Okay, so then you've got, so you've got, I would show you, but she's holding it. So you've got E is for eyes, the child's the rabbits, right? And then F starts the next couplet but it's on the same page. And so then you're like turning pages in the middle of a couplet, which makes no sense. So you've got asleep and then sheep. 
then overhead and going to bed, separate pages. Then J is for jump and don't bump your head, which doesn't have a separate line that it rhymes with. It rhymes with the previous two lines. So at least we're back to the rhymes being on opposing pages, but why are there three lines that rhyme instead of two suddenly or four? And like, uh, and also we just rhymed head overhead with bump your head. Words don't rhyme with themselves. <laughs> ah, okay, so then you have K's for kissing your mother goodnight. Fine. L is for listening when they turn out the light. Like, it's a weird line, but whatever. And then M is for mother. We just talked about our mother. Our mother was K for kissing. So, like, uh, you can't just do that. Especially not, like, sorry. You can't just do that. Especially not, with, like, two pages. Like, two letters after. You're back to mothers. <sighs> so, N is for the night. Okay. So, yeah, we had good night. Out the light, you in tight, starry night. <laughs> then we get to the first the first line that tripped me up. The first several times I read it, and I was like, why doesn't it rhyme anymore? Oh, it's for oh the story they read, right? Like, I don't know, but I always, every time, read it as present tense, the story they read, P is for pillow under your head. Again, what's with the heads? This is the third head. At least it doesn't rhyme with head, but it's it rhymes with the previous lines. Q is for quiet. Great. R is for rabbits. What's with the rabbits again? Why are there rabbits in a storybook? Like, they live outside in this. They're not, like, sleeping with the baby. It's like, why are there rabbits? And what's the point of them never making a sound? Because I don't think that's true anyway. <sighs> T is for time. That's cute. So... U is for nothing under the bed. That's cute. I like I like it when the the letter is in the middle. Yeah. You like that too? But then V is for visions that dance in your head. What's with all the heads? <sighs> okay, X is for all of the things you can play, which is like fine, right? And in the picture, here I can pick it up and show you again now. In the picture, there is a xylophone, which is a clever way of saying, like, there's, they can't play with an x-ray. Like, there's not that much else that you can put for x. So I think that's fine. I think that's clever. Y is for yawning. Good. This page ticks me off so much. Because for all of the ways that they were, like, deviating from the structure of the poem throughout the story, you know, throwing in extra lines you know splitting it between pages now suddenly they go z is for zipper and they put a period they put a period z is for zipper this is where they stopped caring entirely like and then it doesn't even continue the rest of the thought in the same cadence of the poem because it's like suddenly Z is for zipper, now zip into bed, not another peep go to sleep. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't, ah, uh, why? And then the last line of the book is, is an illustration instead of the rest being text typed in. Like, what is going on? Why is there a zipper? There's no zippers in any of these. It would be fine if they were actually showing, like, a sleep sack or a sleeping bag, but there's no zipper in the picture. Why is Z for zipper? Why are these sleepy ABCs, but there's a zipper in there? Like, what's the period? Oh my gosh. I'm going to give an honorable mention to I is for me who is going to bed. I think that's clever. I think that that's like, once you are a little bit more literate, you're like, oh, I get it. I is for me. That's cute. I don't know. But maybe it also, there's like no eyes on that page. So, except for is. I is for is. So many heads, so many rabbits, and I just, every time I read this, when I get to the story they read, it reminds me, and then I get to the end, and I cannot read it with a straight face, like, why? It's a, such a shame, because Goodnight Moon is, like I said, like the seminal uh, bedtime classic. I borrowed it from the library so that I could read through it again. And I'm not sure that it holds up as well as I thought it would because it also, it doesn't have the poetic structure that I would have expected. Um, you can read it yourself and find out this video is about a different book, but like, 
I think I can forgive that because it's a little bit like is esoteric the right word that it's not trying so hard to be a poem in the same way that this one is like couplets rhyming couplets and this one it, you know it throws some some extra wrenches into the works there and also like you've got to love a book that'll just have a blank page that says good night nobody that's just so sweet but also good night is two words and I don't think Margaret Wise Brown knows that anyway I wouldn't recommend Sleepy ABC. If you're looking for a classic bedtime story, I would recommend Goodnight Moon, the original. Um, also, like in contrapoint to everything I said, Llama Llama Red Pajama is like the best bedtime story. And I'm going to do a separate video in a couple weeks sometime telling you exactly why I think it's perfect as a bedtime story, with one exception, which I'll get to. Anyway, that is today's video. Thank you for listening to me complain about a particular part of our bedtime routine I don't care for. Yeah, I don't like it when you pick that book because I don't think it's a very good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.